Hello guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna check out the Valley of the Ancient demo in Unreal Engine 5 to see how it works, uh, kind of break it apart. All right, so the startup level here just shows us the minimum specs that you need for uh, to be able to run the project and my specs, I'll go ahead and put it on the screen right now. So I have a pretty decent PC and shouldn't have any problems running this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up the level here. Now, one thing to note is the fact that it's 100 gigs uh, unpacked. I don't know how big the download is. I think it's like only 20 gig, 30 gig download, but I read somewhere that the size is due to the fact that they have like 8K textures on everything. Um, so the actual game itself could be compressed to about 20 to 30 gigs without all the 8K textures, so. All right, so here we are in the demo. So you can see it's a pretty big scene and I think I have six tiles loaded okay yeah six tiles loaded up here i'm also recording too and uh and i have you know all my programs open and stuff so it's pretty resource intensive and obviously you guys see why here very detailed all quixel mega scans and we're gonna go ahead and play through this and i'm gonna make this full screen as well Okay, so we have our character here near the fire. Looks pretty good. So we can click, left click to drone. You see I'm in a little frame rate drop there, but. Okay, so we can move around, fly around the scene. Shift the turbo. And so pretty much how we're able to make this happen is through uh, the technology Nanite, as you've already probably heard a million times. Uh, basically, there's all these Quixel Mega Scans on the scene, and there are they're essentially raw Mega Scans. And the way it works is they're clustered into triangles, and the triangles break everything up. And as you get farther away from the mesh, it's able to keep the same composure much better than traditional LODs in, in like Unreal Engine 4 or any other game. Um, so when I zoom in here, you're not seeing any part of the mesh popping in and out because of that triangulation and the clustering. And we'll, I'll show you what I mean here in a second, but... Okay, so we'll hit X to return, and then we hold on W to move. And there's a lot of screen tearing here, but I don't really have like a V-Sync monitor or anything, so. Okay, so we can walk around, shift to walk, and the scene looks amazing, honestly. Uh, it kind of reminds me of like Star Wars Battlefront, uh, the EA dice one. Okay, so we'll go ahead and walk over to this little portal here. Okay, so the portal takes us to this other dimension called the Dark World, and they're using this new technology called Data Layers to layer on levels upon levels, which is kind of like a niche sort of thing I want to say because um, I could see its uses like for example making transition between a certain level all right so we transitioned in here and I've got to say this looks a lot better than the uh, the other map that I was just in but so there's a campfire right here and they call it data layers. They allow you to layer all of the rocks here with the different materials to make it look like the same exact scene um, and transition between those two levels. 
So. And again, the textures here are pretty high quality. Quixel Mega Scans. And yeah, we'll go ahead and walk down the path here. I mean, just look at the detail though on these rocks. All right, so we'll keep walking over here. I'm gonna hold down left mouse click to shoot. You see my frame rate is a little laggy. Um, it obviously probably run a lot better if it was, you know, a packaged game rather than just running it in the editor itself. Okay, so we're gonna walk past here. And an interesting thing here, we can actually look at this rock. This part of the building, you can see the sculpted, or maybe the um, raw photogrammetry model. It's actual topology instead of normal maps which again uses nanite. And yeah, let's go ahead and check this out. Looks pretty good. Have some cloth there. Okay, so the next part right here, our character automatically jumps over the little ledge. I guess that's like a new animation feature or something. And over here, you have to shoot this part. I'm assuming like the uh, destruction here is utilizing chaos, but I'm not entirely sure, so. Okay, so I'm wondering if like the level behind us is streaming out as we go off or is it just know how to do its thing, I don't know. Okay, so it's gonna play the cutscene here. Okay, so that was a really resource intensive scene. Kicker is pretty much just shooting red laser beams at me. And if you notice, if you just stand in place, and if you let the beam get a little bit closer to you, you just do this little uh, dodge animation. Anyway, so the actual character here is also using Nanite. Um, and I'll actually just take it out real quick to show you that. So we have to exploit the weak parts right here. Um, and then when it's down, just like that. All right, so we can walk up to the destroyed mesh here and you can see on the armor plates, that's all sculpted detail. And so unfortunately Nanite right now is quite limited on what it supports. It only, I believe, only supports static meshes. So the reason why they chose this robot is because they can act, they can attach the static meshes uh, to a skeletal mesh and still utilize all this detail in it, so. But yeah, that's pretty much the demo. Um, unless I'm obviously missing something here, but I'm pretty sure that's pretty much it. Yeah, so let's go ahead and check it out in the editor. So we'll go ahead and check out um, this little scene over here. Take a look at this fire though. It looks pretty 
high quality. It's a photo scan fire right there and, and the dynamic material on it. And there's our character. We can actually check out that character mesh. So it looks like the character here. We have hair, groom, our camera. And it looks like they use gameplay abilities uh, for a little particle attack that the character has. So anyways, in this level here, I've showed it off a little bit um, in my previous video, but we can go back to our visualizer here. And I'll show you guys, first of all, the instances. So these are, I believe, all the different meshes placed in the level. And there's a ton, as you can see. And so, like these rocks here. Um, I believe these are clusters, but basically they've taken a bunch of different meshes and joined them together. So if I go to Overdraw, um, we can see where there's um, high po concentration of like meshes that aren't being seen by the camera. So I'm wondering how they handle that because if we take apart some of these meshes here, you're gonna see there's more mesh under there. There's just a bunch of stuff under here. So I'm wondering how exactly they um, cull out the parts that the camera can't see to save on you know performance. And of course we can go to our triangles here. You can see how many triangles there are in our scene. There's a lot. And then we can see the clustering happening. So that when we get close to these rocks, they're broken up into smaller and smaller and smaller triangles. As we move far away, they cluster into larger triangles. So, And again, I mentioned this in my other video. There is no terrain in here. This is literally all just mesh stitched together. So. And it blends really nice. Um, obviously the materials are the same. But yeah, uh, let's go ahead and check out the other level. All right, so to access the other level, uh, we want to go to window data layers. And here you want to check box right here, the dark world and hit this little hide for the campfire replace and hit the show for the dark world. So, so in here we can see our level here, the campfire scene, and all of the rocks have been replaced and has been kind of layered on top of the other level. And so here's a pathway um, to this area where the rock spawns. And then through the gates right here. And then of course to the final boss spot. So I'm guessing they uh, either put like a filter on these rocks or something like that to get it a different color or they change the material, I don't know. So let me pull up the content browser here and check out check out the uh, ancient one model here, which is the boss in the game. So here's a mesh, and as we can see here, it's built up of these different armor pieces, which are nanite enabled, high quality meshes here. You see all that. And it's layered onto the onto the actual skeletal mesh here, so I can pull that up. So it looks like this is just the basic model of it. And they've attached all of those pieces and components. Pull apart that and you see the gears. That's actually pretty cool. And over here, it looks like there's a bunch of different graphs. Looks like all of the AI um, blueprint and stuff is built in here. 
and I'm not entirely sure if this is also probably using gameplay abilities. I'm not an expert on that, but yeah. Yeah, but this is a cool little animation here. Yeah, the gear spinning. Yeah, these are pretty cool maps. Uh, you can use, of course, all of these rocks and meshes. They're all uh, Quixel Mega Scans. Uh, they did mention a new type of Mega Scan, where it's like a larger combined mesh to speed up the workflow. So I'm wondering if that is directly in Bridge or or how in particular we can access that. But yeah, I mean this piece right here looks pretty nice and this whole level kind of just reminds me of Lord of the Rings or something for some reason so but yeah that's pretty much it for this video kind of wanted to just check out you know the new demo map that showcases what's possible within the new engine I mean they really just went all out on this one they used just like a combination of everything it's interesting that they mention or they kind of showcased um, showing this off on like the Xbox and PlayStation consoles. So I'm wondering if there is a way that they downscale this and allow it to run on lower end hardware. I know for sure in particular my, my computer was having trouble running it at certain points. Two to three years from now, uh, the hardware is obviously going to catch up and we're going to be able to run this. Like 60 FPS, 120 FPS, with just like a normal GPU. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, I know it's I know it's kind of a short video. Um, let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.